2.0, sorry for the boring bio that I apparently submitted, um, but um, all of what I'm gonna talk about today is kind of based on hoping that patient data can be secure so, uh, and can have private. So what is Health 2.0? Health 2.0 we think of as a movement that does three things. Um, it has adaptable technology that can be used on all platforms. It thinks about the user, which comes back to that privacy discussion that we just had, and it uses data to drive decisions in healthcare. So we do this because healthcare costs a lot of money. Right? We spend about eighty-five hundred dollars per person on healthcare in this country. Norway is the next developed country up there, and they spend five thousand dollars a person. And the data from wearable devices can help us solve that. This is what wearable devices are doing: celebrities wearing fitness gears. Um, and, and the data from that is great, but that's not what's going to help us solve the healthcare crisis that we're having right now. It's just fitness devices that we're seeing in the mainstream. Um, and there are about 400 fitness devices that are out there right now that we're tracking in our database. So it's not just Fitbit and Nike Fuel Band and whatever Apple's about to come out of it, but there are 400 competitors and only a couple of them are actually going to succeed. So the first generation of these were just an accelerometer that measured your steps maybe made a couple guesses about your step, what that meant for your health, and you had to plug them in to actually get any data out of them. What happens next is that we get better devices um, that are gimmicky, like the Nike Fuel Band, which when you make a gimmicky device, you fire your entire team, or the Body Medulin, which is FDA approved, but entirely clunky and not nice to wear. Um, but that led to a really cool partnership. Body Media and Jawbone came together. Jawbone has this great design. Body Media has this great science. We're hoping that this has some effect in the clinic in the coming years because, as I said, Body Media can measure things like caloric outtake, output, um, and no one else can. Own Media, Own Signal, excuse me, just announced an awesome partnership today with Ralph Lauren. You just wear this t-shirt when you go to the gym, gym and it measures very, a lot of things about you. Again, that data can be hacked. It's not secure yet. How do you bring it into the uh, into the EHR, into the health records? That's really tough. But it's not just for fitness. Um, clinical use is rising, and that's where we're going to save a ton of money in the healthcare system and solve our healthcare crisis. Um, a couple examples of those are MC10. This is a really scary one. They're building implantable wearable devices. You can put it on your skin. You can put it on an organ. It can measure all things about you that doctors can't measure, have no idea. Um, scary in terms of privacy, but really cool. Or the Google contact lens, right? I'm sure you've all seen this. It measures glucose in your eye um, instead of pricking your finger as a diabetic. So it, it's really going to change the way diabetics live and hopefully can keep some people out of the hospital because that data will be transmitted in real time. Um, and this is the challenge that they're all trying to solve. Getting good data, putting it into something like an EHR or a platform, and spitting it out to make a really good decision. And no one's doing that right now, and it leads to frustrated physicians and providers because they don't have enough time, it's not in their workflow, and they can't take this data and use it for anything good right now. So they ignore it, and we're practicing medicine like we're in 1960. Um, they also only have 20 minutes per patient, so a lot of these companies that are creating these clinical devices aren't thinking about the 20 minutes a doctor has with a patient. It takes 10 minutes for a doctor to interpret the data, talk to the patient, give them an explanation of it, so they can't do that. There are lots of other challenges, right? Efficacy is not proven on a lot of these things. The economic impact is not proven, and HIPAA and patient privacy is so important in this, um, but no one's really figured out how to, how to solve this. I don't know if we can. And, and currently, there are only a few people who care about it. Unfortunately, you have wellness professionals, social workers, physical therapists who care about it, organizations that are financially incentivized to care about it, and of course patients, and maybe that's the most important piece. Um, in the future, I'm seeing a few things in, in the space. These are where you save money. If we keep people out of the hospital, we go down to that $4,000 a person spend, right? But these things are things wearable devices can do today and, and keep people out of the hospital. Um, so, we want to reduce the cost and time that, of our healthcare system. We want to increase the provider's info about it. If your doctor knows about what you've been doing, you can't lie to them whether you exercise or not, right? Maybe that can help some people. Um, if you want to join the conversation, there are a couple ways on the screen to do that, or you can talk to me afterwards. Um, again, I'm Graham from Health 2.0. Thanks.